like that garden, that little city plot garden gave me so much confidence. So the first year I had a five by five and then the second year like was a 10 by 10. So I doubled it. But I like learned so many lessons. Like there was this tiny old woman who had the plot next door to me and her plot was like just gorgeous. And she gave me so much good advice. And she, she like told me, she was like, if something dies, Rhonda, just like plant something else. Like don't save a black thumb. Like don't blame yourself. Like don't get like all hung up on it. Just like plant something else like immediately. Like don't even worry about it. This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. Grounded in Maine podcast is an open conversation about how we show up for the world. I started this podcast out of a desire to learn new ways to be sustainable because the word sustainability is big. It can be overwhelming and I just wanted to learn, you know, different ways to try to be part of the solution and not feel like it's too late. So I'm talking to people who are doing different things and learning so much. I hope you are too. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy Fagan. My guest is Rhonda Lynn. She is a writer. She's also a, um, she has her own business and she's a homesteader. She actually started out her homesteading journey in an apartment in the city. So that's, that was, it's a really cool thing to talk about because, um, you know, so many people start off like they buy some land and then they kind of have to, but um, this is this is her choice. So she started out in an apartment and then she just happened to have purchased a uh, huge, I think she said 36 acre property where that she is, you know, so now she's a planting fiend, uh, planting her food forest. And uh, so we're talking a lot about her homesteading stuff. And also I think we're talking about her writing and uh, we just had a lot in common One of my favorite things was in her guest form, she had said homesteading is a state of mind. And uh, that really touched me because when I was starting, before I started the podcast, I wanted the topic to be about homesteading and I ended up switching gears a little bit. But when it was that, when that was the plan, homesteading as a state of mind was one of the titles that I was throwing around in my head. So, um, we just had that in common. We have quite a bit in common actually, but, um, so we're going to, we're just, you know, we're just chatting about all the things that she's doing, which are so very cool. Um, one of the things that I really like about Rhonda is that she talks about like slowing down and just being, just being still and just appreciating where you're at. And also like eating seasonally because it's super healthy and full of, you know, nutrition. And, you know, if you're eating it when it's seasonal, you're eating it when it's local. And that is just the best part for you. And um, I'm just I'm excited for you guys to get to know Rhonda the way that I know her. So I hope that you enjoy this. If you um, if you do enjoy this, please feel free to rate and review wherever you're listening. If you don't mind making sure that you're subscribed to the podcast, that would be amazing. And if you think that there's somebody that you know would enjoy this, please share that with them as well. And um, I'm always looking for feedback. I'm always looking for new guests. So um, if you know of somebody or if you are somebody who has such story to share, um, please let me know. I hope that you have a great week. Thank you so much for listening again. I appreciate your your being here. And now let's uh, let's get to Rhonda. 
My guest today is Rhonda Lynn. Rhonda and I uh, met on the usual Facebook page, which is a podcasting, uh, find a guest, be a guest, or be a guest, find a guest, however order that goes, uh, which is such a cool page. You can meet um, the most incredible people. And I have met so many incredible people, uh, one of them being Rhonda, who um, is a homesteader, but uh, she also um, has this really awesome blog uh, called Earth and Jar. And um, we are going to talk about both of those things. So Rhonda, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we connected, Amy. Yes. Uh, and so homesteading, you are, you, did you say you've been doing this for like 11 years or you've been on your property for 11 years? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And so how, how did you start? How did you decide to do that? Is that something that you've always wanted to do? I mean, I think I've, I'm like always, I mean, I was a, as a kid, I grew up outside and I loved being outdoors. And, you know, when I was in college, like even living in the dorms and in apartments, I was like always reading herbalism books. And after I graduated, I moved to New Mexico and I was teaching near the Navajo Nation reservation. And um, I just like started to like read all these books from the library about permaculture and, you know, just like really trying to like lean into starting to learn about like canning and so like even from this tiny tiny apartment that I had back then you know I just started to learn a lot and then eventually I moved to Ann Arbor Michigan to another little apartment in the city and there I started growing like just some herbs and started doing like a little bit more canning I had started some of that in New Mexico um, and eventually I got like a five by five five foot by five foot city garden plot which was like the most wonderful thing, like right in the intersection of these two huge streets in the city. Um, but it gave me like a place to put my hands in the dirt and like talk to other gardeners. And, and you were hooked. Yes, absolutely. So that's kind of how it started. Wow. But that's cool that you had all the um, the books and the education beforehand mm-hmm. to like make a plan. Because I, I am, I'm not a planner. I'm like, I have all this land. And we were just talking about Um, my new property and I want to do a food forest and you said you know it's probably good to get to know your land first I'm like no I'm putting seeds in Um, (laughs) as quick as I can make holes (laughs) I'm putting things in Uh, but uh, and it it probably shows your garden is probably a lot better than mine but um, it all it's all you know it's therapy it's so good for the soul to have your hands in the dirt but um, so what did you with your five by five plot what did you start with I mean, I just grew things that I like to eat, right? Like, so tomatoes and peppers and onions. I'm trying to think squash and cucumbers, you know, so I just, you know, really put a lot in and really densely planted. And just going back to like what you said before about like kind of doing a lot of planning. I don't know that I necessarily did a lot of planning. I did a lot of learning and, um, you know, was then able to just kind of like take those pieces with me, you know, as I went. So it wasn't like I had this grand master plan for for what this would all be as much as it was just like following what seemed really fun and interesting. Ah, okay. And how have you done in your, um, in your gardens? Have you tried the three sisters planting Mm -hmm. you have? Is that, is that legit? I mean, I've always found, um, like that it didn't like work quite as well as I wanted it to mostly because like, I found that corn has to be like planted a little bit more closely together, at least here to pollinate well. Um, but like, I love the concept of like planning things really densely. And so that's what you were saying, like just even having an acre or, you know, even having like a patio or a five by five plot, you can like really grow a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you put things way closer together than what the seed packets tell you, you know, they do fine and you don't have to weed as much and it's just makes it easier. Okay. Cause I, I'm, when I, when I think about that, I think about having to thin like carrots and beets and onions and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. is it, and I think I've tried that with lettuce and it doesn't grow very big. Is that, um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think, uh, I mean, I, I've, I have, um, wanted to do something like that mm-hmm. and I I get weirded out and and worried about um about having to thin and things not growing very well because they're too crowded but have you not had that experience I mean I think like maybe it's just a different mindset because you know so say if I'm like planting beets and they're too close together you know like the ones I thin I'll just eat in salad as beet greens 
Um, and so just like trying to leverage the waste or the same thing with lettuce, you know what I mean? That if you do have to thin it, just eat those baby greens and they're super nutritious. And then, you know, you have achieved what you were set out to as well. Uh, always positive. Okay. Let's think about what you can use it for. Okay, cool. Um, I'm done with that. But so, um, all right. So you're in an apartment, you've got a five by five plot, and then you eventually ended up in on a 36 acre <laughs> homestead. That's a big change. <laughs> it was, it was. And it was like that garden, that little city plot garden gave me so much confidence. So the first year I had a five by five and then the second year like was a 10 by 10. So I doubled it, but I like learned so many lessons. Like there was this tiny old woman who had the plot next door to me and her plot was like just gorgeous. And she gave me so much good advice and she she like told me she was like if something dies Rhonda just like plant something else like don't say you have a black thumb like don't blame yourself like don't get like all hung up on it just like plant something else like immediately like don't even worry about it and like eventually you'll find what grows for you mm. and I thought that was like such empowering advice like for oh, gardening right. and for yeah. life too right to like not get so hung up that it's like all our fault and just keep like kind of playing and and then eventually we sort of figure out what can work for us. Mm. I mean, I actually, I do have that mindset somewhat um, because it, there's so many, there are so many variables to gardening specifically that you can't say it's you like one year, like last year in Maine, it rained for five and a half months yeah. and you know, all the gardens were garbage. <laughs> um, so you could know everything about gardening and all the best tip, tips and tricks, but you can't prevent that. Um, but so I'm just like, you know, you plant you plant as much as you can and what you just have to celebrate what grows. Mm -hmm. But I love that to just, you know, like take the dead thing out and put something fresh in and, and start over. Um, and you'll have something, you'll always have something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, some things will like a lot of low water, a lot of water and some things will like a lot of sun. Some things will like everything else. But, um, so what, okay. So five by five to 10 by 10, and then you said, I'm ready for 36 acres, mm -hmm. pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And I looked, I will be honest with you. Like I looked at like 50 properties before I found this one. So it was like, not, um, you know, just like a quick jump because I really, you know, like wanted to find the right place and obviously the price needed to be affordable. And so like, I looked for a long, long time um, before finding this property, which honestly was like sort of a gem. It has a river running through the center of the property and the house is not um, very big, which is why it was affordable. It's like, you know, just under a thousand square feet, which is perfect. But um, I don't know. It, and it needed a lot of work, you know, and but I think like just kind of having like a vision of what I wanted and what it could be. It was very much like kind of, you know, grown over the woman who owned it it had been her husband's home and then he had died and she had another home. So it just wasn't her priority for a while. Um, you know what I mean? But just like kind of keeping my eye, like I really wanted land. And so, you know, the house, like I knew, you know, that I could fix up, but um, the land was, was the thing that like, I really had my eye. Well, that's where you want to spend all your time. The house is just mm -hmm. a place to sleep and cook. <laughs> exactly. Totally. Yeah. And then you want to be outside and, and enjoy all that space and the, the, elements and everything and that's that's so beautiful my house is under a thousand square feet too mm -hmm. I'm like I hate to clean you know, like so there's I think you're right yeah there's like something that's a real gift in that too especially if you want to live a life outdoors yeah I mean I don't want to be outside it's too hot but um but I do want to you know I'll work in the middle of the night if I have to out there mm -hmm. just have to get some lighting but um that's so cool I love that and I'm you've known for a long time that like this has been your goal for a long long time and that's so awesome uh and then so and you so you're growing food forest mm -hmm. which is something I don't know a lot about but I want to because I want my place to be a food forest how do you plan that I mean and I'm like certainly no expert in it but like from what I know you know that it's like kind of observing the land and observing where the water flows and you know kind of how things move through the property and then, you know, it's kind of planting things together. So 
you know, sometimes like in, you know, a regular orchard, they'll just be like a tree in the middle of grass, but a food forest is more like planting maybe like some small bushes or other plants around that. So you kind of are creating, and for me, I'm like just a lazy gardener. Um, right. So I want to like create systems that are just like, you know, easy to maintain and don't require like a ton of inputs and just a ton of work. And so, you know, it's just a way to, I think, make life easier and kind of work with nature as, um, you know, you're putting things together. Right. So just like fill in all those gaps so you don't have to mow the lawn and, um, and like plant things that like shade underneath taller things. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's that's my goal. I got to figure that out, but, um, very cool. Oh my gosh. And so does this, I mean, the smile on your face says a lot, like, (laughs) is that working for you? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's been such a gift just to my whole life. I feel like, because, you know, it's like allowed me to like, really like view the seasons and, and um, watch nature in a way, I think that's like helped me to be a lot more gentle with my own life and my own self and to kind of like let go of like some of the shoulds, um, you know, that life tells us that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think like nature's given me, you know, like a portal to like a gentler way of being, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's like, I mean, when you read that, you know, like, petting your dog or petting your cat helps to lower your blood pressure and stuff like that. And it's, it's 100% true, but also just being out there and observing how things just happen, you know, it just like, you know, life just floats when you're outside and you're just like, take a deep breath and, and, you know, breathe that in and feel it and um, let it surround you. I totally get that. Um, I have this beautiful deck that I'm like, waiting for it to waiting for time to enjoy the beautiful weather when it comes but um I'm really looking forward to that it's all ready for me I just need to get out there um but so I I think that's awesome I think that um I love that you're doing it I love that you have so much land and I so you have you said you have ducks Mm -hmm. who else is on your property so in the past I've had chickens and rabbits, but right now I just have two ducks that are, um, they're like wild. So they, they like would not go in their coop when someone gave them to me last summer. And so they just like sleep outside. They free range all day. They like lay eggs everywhere, like an Easter egg hunt. And it's, um, it's been like so, um, fun all, all winter long. I kept thinking like something was going to get them, but they're, they're fine. Like they're super aggressive. If, um, you know, like my dog or, you know, somebody comes by them, they'll kind of like charge and stuff. So they've done a good job in keeping the predators away. So I have them right now. And then I have a dog and a cat. Nice. Okay. That's plenty. Plenty. I mean, you're getting eggs from the ducks when you find mm-hmm. them. Yeah. I used to have like 50 chickens and um, I loved them, but then it was like such an excess that, I mean, I was glad to share the eggs and like sell a few. Um, But at the same time, like just paring it down a little bit in some ways. And that's what I think like sometimes as homesteaders, we're like thinking like, oh, I should be like doing more and like building this out more. And there's like, you know, kind of like a model for what that looks like because people are aiming for you know, total self-sufficiency. Mm-hmm. But I think like when we're homestead, especially on our own terms, that can like really look like an ebb and flow and finding out like, okay, like what's the right level of, you know, gardens or animals or whatever, you know, for different seasons of my life. Um, mm-hmm. And like, just being like, okay with that. I totally get that. I mean, that's 50 chickens. That's cool. I feel like, um, you know, some some homesteaders might have this like scarcity mindset, like you have to hoard all of the stuff and like everything that I grow, I'm going to keep and I'm going to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and it's, it's good to have storage. It's good to be prepared. I'm down with that. But then like 50 chickens, what the heck are you going to do with all those eggs, man? Yeah. It's just, it's just more work for you. Like you're working to give that away, <laughs> um, which, you know, that's great. But do you, you know, do you have time for that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the sustainability and that, like, you have to look out for yourself and like what you are spending your time doing. And is that fulfilling you? And is that what you want? Mm-hmm. Um, 
but uh but yeah so you wanted to talk about community and um so this might be a good lead in for that so you know you're 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 um giving eggs to your neighbors and stuff like that but like what um how where did where did you want to hit with the community thing because I know we were talking about that a little bit yeah absolutely I mean I think like that like sometimes, and maybe it is with that scarcity mindset that you're saying that people are trying to like do it all a hundred percent themselves. And, you know, I just think it's like so much more joyful to like do this work together, whether that's like, you know, canning with like friends or with family or whether that's um, like, I have a man who comes and hunts deer here in the fall. And then in exchange, like, you know, he'll give me some meat or, you know, a neighbor who has you know, um, so many pear trees and she doesn't like pears. So she lets me pick her pears. I was just doing that earlier today, you know? And so it's like, you know, and it, I don't know, we have like other ways that we exchange things, but it's just like, makes it joyful. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You don't like feel so alone in the process and like, you know, it's just like really enriching. Right. To, I mean, to do that work that, together. That poor lady with all the pears, like, what is she going to do? You know, she's got all these pears. What do you, you got to do something. I mean, either you have to do something. I mean, she doesn't even like pears. Yeah. But um, that's such a, it's such a beautiful way. And then I think that it's great when you find that community that people that are willing to work to, you know, barter and trade and stuff like that. Like it's such a, it's such a good way to, to really take care of each other because it's, it's about that and making sure that everyone has what they need. And um, you know, if there's someone that is, you know, you've got 36 acres and you probably have some deer. <laughs> um, and you know, you're not going to, if you're not going to do it, he, he could do that and, you know, just make sure not to kill the de- the ducks, you know, but, um, I just think that, I just think that's so beautiful to really just like look out for each other. And I think that, um, you know, we were talking about, um, I mean, I was talking about like tomatoes and, 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 you know, a lot of stuff that, people feel like they, they need to be able to, to do it all themselves, but then there's just like you're saying so much joy in doing things together. And I think that I was thinking, um, as I was planning on moving here, I joined a Facebook group or two or like eight and, um, somebody who had posted that they were teaching a sewing class. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I have a sewing machine that I'm afraid of. Like mm-hmm. the, the tension or something is keeps getting messed up and I don't know how to fix that. And then I don't know how to read a, a pattern, but I want to learn how to do it. So like, that's so cool. Um, But, you know, things like that. And like, uh, and I was telling you about the, the people that I've been meeting on the Nextdoor app and, you know, someone's going to be mowing my lawn and someone's going to, you know, maybe move next door. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe I'll use their chicken coop. But um, I just think that there's, there is, there's so much joy and there's so much, you know, community helps you to feel part of something because, you, you know, I don't, I don't understand the whole self-sufficiency thing. I just, I just don't like, I don't, I'm cool with being alone ish, but um, you know, like you're saying, there's just so much more, there's so much more to life than, living in a hole and um you know the people have so much to to offer yeah I mean I think our culture like teaches us you know what I mean it's like so fiercely individualistic to a detriment when like we're not meant to operate that way and and so like it's up to us to figure out like how do we you know kind of build those communities and I mean that, that can be in such small ways like I was thinking back to that little city um city garden when I lived in the apartment in Ann Arbor like I met this elderly gentleman who lived on the way to the garden and you know I would come and like bring him some produce and you know drop off some tomatoes and in the process like chat and have the most enriching conversations and I don't think I necessarily would have like met him under other circumstances but it was like I don't know that being outside like opened the door to that in a way that was just really beautiful Right. Well, and the little lady that, that taught you about the Mm -hmm. things don't work out to just plant something new and start over. It's, um, you know, we all, we all gain from each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the world is not, 
the world is not the same and um everyone if everyone is not the same so we all have something to give and we all have something to gain um, i think that's i think that's a beautiful i think it's a beautiful lesson for us in i mean nature nature does it that's you know when you're outside the trees take care of all the things that need shade and and they they produce oxygen and they take it the carbon dioxide and i'm going to get that wrong but um you know the trees do their job and the flowers do their job and the bees do their job and everyone's working together to make mm-hmm. things better and we need to do the same we can learn a lot we can learn a lot yeah i think it gives us like sovereignty in like a really unkind system to lean into nature and to lean into community because like so much of our culture is all about you know like having more and doing more constantly you know but nature is just such a beautiful what do you call it like a template for um you know our lives and I totally lost my train of thought with where I was going with that but I just think that like when we can lean into that a little bit we can kind of like disconnect from this constant like need to be productive and to perform in a way that's really nourishing to us just be just be still for a little bit and let things soak in and um you know get your head together that's legit I think that's valid um and then uh so another thing that I wanted to definitely touch on is you know in the same sort of line like you have um you know your homesteading and your your property and and um your community that you're building like all this stuff and then you also have this whole other side of you which is a writer and this must like give you having all of this this um natural backdrop and the peace in your in your life like gives you some space and some uh a backdrop to you know be creative right yeah absolutely and I think it's like kind of like nature as like a template to do that on our own terms too that like our culture asks us to be constantly productive and like always professional and always youthful and like always very put together right but when we look at nature like my tomatoes this time of year like they're vibrantly producing and they're dying at the same time and so like we can look to nature to see like things are not always like perfectly productive all the time and so like maybe then I can see my own life through a gentler lens so that as I'm like judging what I you know should be doing at a given time you know I can just be like a little bit kinder to myself and thinking about you know how I want to work and like where I want to put the energy that I have Hmm. Wow. As you were talking, as you were talking about that, I was thinking if tomatoes were on Instagram, (laughs) you'd have the, the ones that are, you know, doing really well and not, not showing those, the cracked ones and the, the sad ones. Um, just if tomatoes had Instagram, man, I always do like a PSA post this time of year. It's like, it's normal that like your cucumbers are dying. It's like normal. Like this is the life cycle of an annual. Like you don't have a black thumb. Like this is nature. And, you know, we can just view our own lives from that same lens that, you know, we can, you know, we can like lean into the energy that we have and we can, you know, be productive in waves, but asking ourselves to be like perfectly perfect all the time is just like such an unkind barometer. Yeah, it's really, you know, we're um, setting ourselves up to fail Mm -hmm. to to ask that much of ourselves. Um, And so that's, (laughs) Uh, what, what are your, do you have like a typical theme for your writing, like all the time? Or do you, is there like a genre or something that you're, is it just life? Yeah, so my substack is called Earth and Jar Stars, and that's like really about being cradled by nature through the shining moments and through the muck of our lives. And some people have told me that those are like nature walks because I, you know, kind of like will start off and going for a walk and then, you know, end with, you know, some kind of more philosophical lesson. And so that's the theme of that publication. And then, you know, I'm a poet as well. 
So my first book is actually being published this fall, which I'm super excited about. And that book is very much like told through the seasons and the elements as well, but is about, you know, really lost. But I think like all of my work is like very much grounded in the seasons. And, you know, I just like try to live my life by that and find it enriching. Um, So you said this is going to be coming out in the fall, this Mm -hmm. this poetry. And fall is like next month, man. Yeah, yep. Do you want to tell us what the, the book is about? Or yeah, what it absolutely. It's called Love The Breath? Chapel of Small Breath. I'm super excited about it. It's my first book and um, it's dedicated Huge. to my, sorry. Huge. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, over the moon about it because I always knew that I was supposed to be a writer, but I, I didn't know like what a pathway into that looked like. And so I went into education and I was just like, you know, I was good at it, but I was really burnt out and just really drained energetically to the point that like, I couldn't really write and I didn't have that much time to like spend outside as I would like to. And so four years ago, you know, I started a business that really gave me the bandwidth to write more. And so it's just been like this journey of kind of coming back to myself and coming back to, you know, what I'm passionate about. Did you say you started a business? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I have like a virtual assistant and copywriting business. Like we work with nature-based spiritual and holistic wellness practitioners. Oh, I think I knew that. I just forgot. That's wild. I mean, I don't, of course you only have two ducks. I mean, yeah, you have no time. You're doing all the things. Yeah. I, I have a team, like I have a wonderful team that supports me. So it's not just um it's not just me by any stretch of the imagination I know but a lot of a lot of homesteaders are like that's they're there all the time and that's mm-hmm. what they do and so you know you were working and you're writing and you're writing and you've got your critters and your garden and like it's a lot of stuff my garden fails because I am doing other things so I mean it's like you have to, it's almost like you have to choose. So it's good that you have help doing that, mm-hmm. but um, that's very cool. And so tell the, the book is called again. Chapel. Oh, it's called the chapel of small breath. And it's really a book in three parts. Um, it's about a, a significant relationship that I had. And then the second part is the relationship dissolves. And then the third part is kind of like about this possible renewal. And um it's been poems I was working on for a long time. My friend Lynn Rather is who the book's dedicated to. And she really encouraged me to share this collection. And she published a book of poems as she was dying. And then she just really inspired me not to wait that long. And so it's been very cool to just, you know, rededicate myself to writing and to, you know, being outside in nature more and um, to be able to like make some of those dreams of mine a reality. Oh. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, it's, it's really beautiful that it's like, it, it, everything is connected in your world, mm-hmm. everything like you are, you're a writer. And so you're writing about nature, which is also healing you and fulfilling you. And like, it's just, it really is all connected. Mm-hmm. Um, and even your, the business that you created is also uh, for writing. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Yeah, I I mean, I think like for me, getting really clear on my values helped me to do that and to just to like be figuring out like, how do I want to be really intentional with, with the energy that I do have, you know, helped me out a lot in terms of like, how do I craft my life in a way that, um, you know, like fulfills all those things and like helps me to do what I want to do in the world, because I really want to work or I do work with entrepreneurs um, that are like kind of showing us a different path forward for our culture and I just think that's so inspiring I didn't want to go into business for a long time because I thought it was so unethical and you know just seemed like so icky to me but figuring out like what my values were and how do I work with people who are also doing work in sustainability and mindfulness and all of these things that I really hold near and dear to my heart and how to amplify those voices in the world has just been a gift that's so awesome. Oh my gosh. And um oh I had a thought. But I I just think it's so you are I I'm not gonna talk. 
<laughs> I can't make words, but um, I just think that's beautiful. I mean, you you decided what you wanted, what lights you up, and you're just doing it. And that is, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I think it's like our culture asks us to spread ourselves like so thin and to like move in so many directions but we when we can like really get clear on you know what's important to us then things become it feels like less like something I should be doing and more something that's like really joyful to me so I almost think it's just like reframing that or you know I think the same way with homesteading right we can look at you know like canning tomatoes as a chore or you know, we can look at it as, you know, like a ritual that's really enriching our lives. And so how to kind of like reframe those that, you know, if, you know, homegrown foods or organic foods are important to me, then how can I kind of make the work that's associated with that, um, you know, seem less like drudgery, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I'll feel that way about tomatoes. <laughs> sometimes this time of year I'm like coring them and like chucking them in the freezer to deal with this winter you know it's yes 100 <laughs> percent uh I just love I love everything about that and I I just so love that you get to be in your garden and with your animals and just like enjoying nature and it's also inspiring you inspiring your writing inspiring you know everything that you own everything that you are and uh, it is just making you stronger. And you get to have this business where you um, are working with other people. And it just sounds like, sounds like a pretty good life. Well, thank you. Uh, wow. Um, I just, I, I want to talk more about this off the camera. <laughs> um, but uh, so this is, this is so fascinating. But so when I, when I see the word sustainability, Rhonda, what does that mean to you personally? I mean, I think when I think about sustainability, I just think about, you know, building a world that we want it to be. I think that we have created like a monster of a system and that we can build another one. And that sustainability is a key part to that. You know, and I also think that like sustainability is about like sovereignty and about like unhooking ourselves from all of these different messages that are coming at us through the news cycle or through, you know, sort of like constant internet. And it's about like kind of choosing your own adventure, if you want to put it that way, and really like deciding how is it that you want to spend your time and how do you want to live your days and how can you really do that in accordance to your values? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That sounds really good. I mean, that sounds, I want that. I want that. <clears throat> but so, okay. So you are, your substack is Earthen Jar of Stars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and folks, these, I'm going to put these links all in the show notes so you can find them. And um, you are on Instagram, right? Yes. And it's Rhonda M Lin, Rhonda dot M dot Lynn, L I N N. Right. Yeah. And you're also on Facebook. Are you elsewhere? I, those are the ones that I remember. Yeah. I do have a LinkedIn account. I'm not on there a ton. And yeah, those are the main ones. <clears throat> okay. And then do you have a, do you have a website? I do. I do. It's um, just my name, Rhonda, R H O N D A Lynn, L I N N dot com. Oh, that's right. Rhonda with an H. Sorry. Rhonda with an H. Uh, awesome. My goodness. Um, I feel like, I feel like I want to go to Michigan. <laughs> I, I want to check out this 36 acre homestead. Uh, but I think I, I'm so impressed. I'm so inspired. Like I, I want to, I want to find that like you have and, and um, just like I laser focus what is important and I think that we could all learn a lot from that and um and then just do that figure out what we want and do it it doesn't sound so hard when you say it like that yeah yeah it is hard so life like, in the way. yeah it is there's so much mug and it's like so much stripping what 
what's like been imposed on you by our culture or by conditioning versus like what you really want, you know, but in doing that, like, I just think beautiful things are possible. And I just want that for everyone. Yeah. My friend Marianne calls that unlearning, Mm -hmm. unlearning what we've been taught to know. And yeah, but uh, that I want, I, yeah, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. Thanks to you. (laughs) But thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's been such a pleasure. And my goodness, we've been working on this for a while. So uh, I'm glad that we finally got to do this. And um, I just thank you for being you, for being as authentic as you are and for uh, just doing what, doing what matters to you and just shining that light. Oh, well, thank you so much for your kind words, Amy. It's been such a pleasure to connect and thank you so much for the conversation. I just want to take a second to thank my guest again for for speaking with me and sharing such great information. I love having these conversations with folks. Uh, I also want to thank Buzzsprout for hosting the podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her music genius, for Becca Coffron and her award-winning artwork. And thank you for listening. I appreciate that so much. Uh, Please check out the show notes for any links and extra information. Uh, And uh, if you would like to follow my guest and uh, find out more about them, I'm sure they would love the the follow. Um, And if you would, if you don't mind leaving a rating or review wherever you're listening, uh, and just help to get this podcast in front of new eyes. That would be amazing. I would really love that. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on the socials and uh, let me know what you're thinking. And if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please let me know that. I would love to have a conversation with you about sustainability. All right. Uh, Thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of the week. There'll come a day To have and hold me A heart that's strong And so sincere Just tell me How do I get there From here Oh tell me How do I get there From here Cause here Cheers.